Hey everybody. This is my 125 gallon native tank. We're looking at my smallmouth bass down there in the right hand bottom corner. And up here in the top dead center you can see some of these rosy side dace. I think they're absolutely beautiful, beautiful fish. I love them. And I want a nice big school of them in my tank. Unfortunately I'm not going to be able to have a school of any of them in my tank as long as I've got this smallmouth bass and of course this Mayan cichlid down here but that's a different story uh, we'll talk about him later the smallmouth bass however was a you know, I'll call it an impulse addition I didn't go out and purchase it I caught it and I thought hmm that would about good size to fit in my tank and home it came with me and now I'm stuck with an aggressive predatory fish in the tank that needs small fish and crayfish to feed on so while I've got it, I have to keep supplying it with food. I recently had a bad outbreak of uh, columnaris bacteria from bringing home minnows from the stream. Not necessarily for food for this fish, but it was still, you know, every time I go out and collect wild minnows and bring them home and put them into the, stream, into the tank, I'm risking bringing home who knows what. But... Like I said, well, I've got that bass in there. That's what we've got to do. So probably today is going to be the last day we do this. Uh, if I don't remove the bass today, it will be removed within the next few days, and I won't have to worry about feeding it again uh, in that time period. But for today, however, uh, we do need to go down and check the minnow trap one more time. I set it out yesterday, and I set it out with some bread in it. So bread probably isn't going to last very long. I'm sure the trap itself is empty by now. Uh, it's a fantastic day out, and I would much, much rather be out on the kayak uh, than down here in the fish room. So we're going to run down, check that trap, see what we've got. We're going to bring home any minnows or crayfish that we've caught in there so that we can get this bass fed for the day. And then I'm going to get out and uh, get out on the kayak where I really want to be today. So sit tight, and I'll see you guys down at the stream in just a minute. All right. Now that we're here, and I'm thinking about it, I probably should have brought a small dip net just in case there's any fish in here that are clearly ill or need to be removed. Well, I can already see at least what looks like a couple of crayfish, but it doesn't look like there's any minnows in it. Let's see if we can reach this from all the way up here. Oh boy, there's plenty of minnows in it. back in although I don't really know what I need to throw it back in for but let's throw it back in anyway all right well it looks like we've got some really good sized creek chubs in there big enough that they would survive we've got a few smaller ones that might become a meal and then we've got a whole lot of crayfish so they actually might be uh, Good for food too. Although I gotta say, this is the look. That's looks like a good uh, afternoon out fishing there to me. <laughs> so I don't know if we're gonna put this crayfish in the tank or I'm gonna take this crayfish out to the reservoir. Um, but we'll see. At any rate, I'll see you guys back at the tank. All right, everybody, we're back here in the basement, and what I did was I separated the largest of the crayfish out of there. And the reason I did that is because the really big ones don't really work well for me for bait. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these. And these are all going to go in the tank. So is that five of them? They're wrestling. So these five are going to go in the tank. And then these are not. These are actually going to go to bait, or I'm going to throw them back one or the other. Probably get used as bait uh, tomorrow or the next day, but I'm going to keep them in a bucket in the meantime. Uh, we will be able to actually talk about them being kept in buckets, and I'll go over a little bit of detail about how to keep crayfish if you want to keep some crayfish as pets. They're really, really easy to keep. 
uh, and I'm actually going to keep some in a bucket with no filtration so we can talk about that in an upcoming video. In the meantime, these fish are still in a very, very heavy salt solution. I brought them back from the stream in a salt solution. We are using regular old salt. We are not using marine salt. This is not a brackish solution. But once again, I gave it a quick taste test and it is very, very salty. So another couple of minutes and that will be about a 10 or 15 minute bath for them. Again, we went right from the minnow trap directly into this bucket of salt water. I prepared it before we left. I believe these creek chubs can deal with uh, fairly high salt levels anyway. I think they're urihaline, and I'm almost positive the crayfish are urihaline. so 10 or 15 minutes in this water shouldn't bother them a bit. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and separate out the crayfish that I'm not putting in the tank, and then we'll go ahead and get them dumped in. Alright everybody, here comes the bass. I think he's getting used to this routine already. So here's all of the minnows that are going in there. These are all creek chubs as far as I can tell. It's all the same species. And they're all pretty big, so we'll see what happens. That's about what I thought was going to happen. So there was two or three of the creek chubs that were small enough that I thought that was going to be their fate pretty quickly, which is what I needed, you know. Again, I need to feed this fish, like it or not. So hopefully that meal and maybe one more small one will satiate him. But bass are not known to be picky eaters and they're not known to be dainty, so it's hard to say, uh, you know, whether it's going to go after any more or not. I think that'll probably tide it over quite a while. That was a pretty good size one. It was a little bit difficult to get down. See, this one here is the other one that I think is small enough that that bass might wind up making a meal of that one. Uh, these down here are all pretty good size. So again, maybe by this afternoon, maybe tomorrow, here, let me put this bucket down. We will uh, be able to get in here and get that bass out of there. So here come all the crayfish. I'm just gonna dump them all in. So those are all the ones that are too big for me to use for bait. So they're all pretty good sized, well established crayfish. Now they're all just going to have to sort of mark out their own territory and figure out who's going to live where and the whole new wave of drama is about to begin more than likely. Now we've also got that Mayan cichlid in this tank who I have determined has teeth. Uh, in fact, I've not only witnessed it crunching through and biting chunks out of crayfish, uh, it's not a pretty sight, but it's impressive, I'll give it that. Uh, it's I've seen its teeth I've looked at it up close and when it opens its mouth a little bit it just has little rows of shiny white teeth in there uh, I don't know whether they're sort of hard crunching teeth or they're sharp slicing teeth but they go through crayfish like it's paper mache so who knows what the fate of these is going to be the bass I should be able to get out of there pretty quickly and pretty easily that's just going to be a matter of me just feeling like doing it and getting in there with my net and catching it it's generally not that big a deal but i really got to be in the mood to do it because it can get really frustrating really quickly and uh i tend to get frustrated easily and i just you know again i got to be in the right mood to do that sometimes it works like a breeze other times i got to put the net down and walk away <laughs> so we'll get in there at some point and we'll get that taken care of and the, like i say the bass will be easy to get rid of i have a couple of people that i know that have uh private ponds and I'm going to go ahead and put the bass in there. Actually, there's one in particular that's fed by some natural springs, and it's a very cold pond. Uh, so I think that will be good for this smallmouth. So that's probably where he's going to go. And then I've got plans for this Mayan cichlid. A friend of mine wants it. So that's going to be a little more problematic. I'm going to have to get it out of here and prepare for shipment and do all that. And I've never shipped a fish before, so I'm a little reluctant to start on that. Uh, it's a little daunting. Uh, thinking about what to do so again we'll get to that when we get to that i'm sure i'll shoot video all about that whole process and everything else and then with any luck if it survives the journey uh, we'll be able to then watch the progress of this fish grow as it lives in a friend of mine's aquarium and we can get occasional updates on how it's doing and we won't lose it forever by just giving it away to an aquarium or something so at any rate make sure you're subscribed 
you won't miss any of the updates I'm talking about or any of the future of this tank or anything else. I got lots of other tanks and there's always something going on down here uh, in the fish room. Don't forget this one is my native tank. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you real soon in the next one.